Hello, and welcome back to the Poetry Podcast with me, Lance Pearson. Program 5. This is the last of three programs listening to some of my favourite poems. They're not necessarily my three favourite poems of all time. The last two were my favourite poem by John Betjeman, as I work with the Betjeman Society, and then a favourite poem of Gerard Manley Hopkins, because I work with the Hopkins Society also. But now we come to my real favourite of all faves, the all-time humdinger. And for that we have to go back through the centuries again. Betjeman was 20th century. Hopkins was 19th century. George Herbert was 17th century. And I am not alone in loving his poetry and this poem in particular. It is many other people's favourite poem, as well as mine. In the manuscript of poems that George Herbert handed over on his deathbed, This was the last poem, and in my view, the finest. It is called Love Three, because there were two earlier poems in the collection, also called Love. And he's not talking about sexual or married love, but the divine love of God for a human being. Herbert was a Christian believer. He had been a royal courtier, but realised he had a deeper call to be a clergyman. And despite all the real differences between them as poets, Betjeman and Hopkins shared this basic life stance. They were Christian believers too. And so am I. Regular listeners will have noticed that many of the poems I choose explicitly declare Christian faith. This is not because I'm only interested in religious poems. Indeed, the topic is usually not particularly religious. Betjeman's poem was about having an operation in hospital. Hopkins was about his brother getting married. I hope this podcast will range far and wide in its themes and poets. But poems written by people who naturally look at any topic from a Christian world view, automatically appeal to me, because I do too. And this is supremely true of George Herbert. He called his poems a picture of the many spiritual conflicts that have passed betwixt God and my soul. And many readers have found them helpful even if they are not conventional religious believers. They may not use the words God and my soul, but they find the poems resonate with the inner conflicts that we all face in one form or another. Andrew Marr, the broadcaster, is on public record about how Herbert's poems helped him recover from illness. One time when I was in Edinburgh for the festival, I was in a cafe having lunch, and I saw Andrew Marr and his wife come in. And it was busy at lunchtime. The only seats in the cafe, uh, or the only empty one, was next to me. I'd almost finished, so I got up and uh, I said to him, "Uh, do take these two seats. I'm a lover of Herbert's poetry, too. And he said, Good heavens, that's the first time George Herbert has got me a seat in a restaurant. But in this last poem in the book, those conflicts that Herbert talked about become resolved. This, to me, is the most sublime poem in the English language. It captivates me because it plays my tune and tells my story. The poet walks through the door to a dinner party and finds that all unexpected, the host is love with a capital L. 
or as I would call him, Jesus. In an exquisite conversation, Herbert tries to back off as he feels out of place. Or at least, could he serve at the table as one of the waiters? Oh no, says love, I am serving and feeding you. This poem says all I would like to say to the world if I had the chance. I want it read at my funeral. Because it talks of having a meal with Jesus, many people think it's about the Lord's Supper or the Holy Communion service. I'm sure that was there in Herbert's mind, but I find the fullest meaning in the reality which Communion or the Eucharist or the Mass are symbols of the relationship between God and the person, me. Or you. Love. Bad me. Welcome. Yet my soul drew back. Guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love. Observing me grow slack from my first entrance in. Drew nearer to me. Sweetly questioning. If I lacked anything. Huh, a guest, I answered. Worthy to be here. Love said, You shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful. Oh, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, Who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame? Oh, my dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat.
Well, that's all for now, folks. I've made a CD of several of the poems by George Herbert, in case you'd like to hear others of them. Uh, details are on the website, the Poetry Podcast with LancePearson.com. If you enjoyed this program or the recent ones, perhaps you could give it a rating or review on iTunes, or if you have one, your preferred podcasting app. And if you'd like me to read one of your favourites, please leave a comment at the website or on our YouTube page. I've already got a listener's request for next time, which will set us on a trail of Poet Laureate poems. <laughs>